8.1 Integral is net change. Example 1. Interpreting a velocity function. Figure 7.1 shows the velocity. Here's the function for the velocity in centimeters per second of a particle moving along a horizontal s-axis for 0 to 5. Describe the motion. And we're going to use our calculator to find stopped when the particle is stopped, when the particle is moving to the right, and when the particle is moving to the left. Let's go to y1 and put the velocity function in. We have t squared minus 8 divided by t plus 1 squared. We'll press enter. And on the window, we need to go from 0 to 5. x is going from 0 to 5, or t. And then the y min has to be negative 10. And if we're going to fit the graph in, we need the y max to be about 30. Let's graph it. From 0 to 1 point something, the velocity is negative, and then after this uh, 0 here, the velocity is positive. Let's find out where the particle is stopped, where the velocity is 0. We're going to calculate the 0. We need to get to the left. Well, left the left is definitely 1, to the right is definitely 2. And the guess is you know 1.5, let's say, right in the middle. So the actual answer is 1.255. So stopped at t equals 1.255. And this particle is going to the right from 1.255 to 5 for sure. We don't know about after that. And this particle is going left from 0 to 1.255. Example 2, finding position from displacement. Suppose the initial position of the particle in example 1 is s of 0 equals 9. What is a particle's position at t equals 1 second, t equals 5 seconds? Well, they're giving us velocity, and we're gonna, we want to find position. So we're going to back up. We're going to integrate v of t dt, and we're going to do that from 0 to 1. Let's find out what that equals. We already have the function in y. So we go to math number 9 and go to variables. We want the y variables and we want y1 because that function is already in y1. Uh, with respect to x and we're going from 0 to 1. Let's find out what that value is. The value is negative 3 and 2 thirds. And notice that it's negative. Well, well look, look at the graph. From 0 to about 1, well from 0 to 1, the velocity was negative, so we're actually going backwards. And that's what this says. That's what the value says. And, and actually, it's the displacement. When we're finding position, we're actually finding out when we integrate how far did this particle move. It actually moved negative 3 and 2 thirds to the left. So just this integral is negative 3.667. Uh, you know, but it didn't start at 0, so the position is not negative 3 and 2 thirds. The position is 9 and then plus 9. So 9 and then go back negative 3 and 2 thirds. So then we have to add 9 to this. So its position is actually 5 and 1 third. Now what about at t equals 5 seconds? So let's integrate from 0 to 5 v of t. And what we're going to find is the displacement from 0 to 5 and then we'll add 9 again. So now we need math number 9, and we're, we can go to y variables still, function y1, comma x, and now we're going from 0 to 5, and the overall displacement from 0 to 5 is 35. So we are 35 units from where we started, but we started at 9. So we have 35, and then that's the displacement. This is displacement. And then, but we started at 9, so we are at our position at t equals 5 seconds is 44. Find the total distance traveled by the particle in example 1. So now we're not looking for displacement, we're looking for the total distance traveled. And if we look at the graph, we want now this negative area, which is displacement, we want that to be positive. So we want the positive displacement. In other words, let's say you start at a particular spot. 
and you walk, let's say, four feet to the left. So this would be negative four. And then you turn around and you walk 10 feet to the right. So let's say overall it's 10. Well, yeah, sure, you, you ended up six feet. Your displacement is six to the right, but your total distance walking was 14 to get to six to the right. So in other words, we're saying how, what was the total distance this particle moved? And to do that, we just have to uh, get all of these negative values to be positive values, and we can do that by integrating the absolute value of this function. So let's go to our calculator. We go to math number nine, and we want math in num. We have absolute value. We want y1, so there's y1. And this is with respect to x, and we are going from, find the total distance traveled. So we're going from zero to five. Zero, five. And press enter, and it might take a little while to calculate this one. Uh, not too bad. So the total distance traveled is 42.586. I think we should be putting centimeters on here. Yep, yeah? so centimeters. This is centimeters. This is centimeters. And we have this one right here. This is also centimeters. Modeling the effects of acceleration. A car moving with initial velocity of 5 miles per hour accelerates at the rate of, this is the acceleration function, miles per hour per second for 8 seconds. How fast is the car going when the 8 seconds are up? So in other words, how fast is velocity? Well, let's look at the acceleration function. Let's graph it. Uh, it has a y-intercept of 0, and then we'd go up 2.4 and over 1, so 2.4 over 1. So here is the acceleration function. And the function, the y is miles per hour, miles per hour per second. And we're doing this for 8 seconds, so the x-axis is actually in seconds. Now for letter A, we're going to integrate from 0 to 8 of 2.4t dt. And uh, when we integrate, we get um, 1.2t squared, and we're evaluating from 0 to 8. So let's find out what that is. That's going to be 1.2 times 64, and then of course minus 0. So that's equal to, let's use a calculator, 1.2 times 64, and that's equal to 76.8. So 76.8, but uh, that's the displacement. That's the displacement of the velocity, but it says a car moving with an initial velocity of five miles per hour. So now, this is the displacement. We have to add five to this, so 81.8 miles per hour. And the reason it's miles per hour is now we're taking, uh, we're going to eight seconds, and remember, this is area under the curve, so we're taking miles per hour per second times seconds. So the seconds cancel perfectly, and you end up with 81.8 miles per hour. Let's look at letter B. How far did the car travel during those eight seconds? Well, here is now, right there is the function for velocity. So V of t is equal to 1.2t squared. And now, if you integrated the acceleration function and you didn't worry about uh, these limits, then it would be plus c. But it tells us what the initial velocity is. So v of 0 is equal to, uh, well, they tell you that's equal to 5, right? So we have 5 is equal to 1.2 times 0 squared plus c. There's your initial value. And as it turns out, c is 5. So the function for velocity is equal to 1.2t squared and then plus 5. Now we're asked, how far did the car travel during those 8 seconds? So in other words, we're looking for displacement. We're not really looking for position here because they don't really give you an initial position. They're just saying, well, how far did it travel? So we're looking for displacement of the velocity function. So we're going to integrate from during how many seconds? During those 8 seconds. So we have 0 to 8 of 1.2t squared plus 5dt. Uh, we have uh, 0.4t to the third plus 5t. And we're evaluating from 0 to 8. We have 0.4 times 8 to the third plus 5 times 8. Let's use our calculator to get that. 
we have 0.4 times 8 to the third and then plus 40. So the distance traveled is 244.8. But let's see what the label would be. The, the velocity is measured in miles per hour. But we're looking at 8 seconds. So what we've found is this uh, 244.8 is miles per hour. But we multiplied times seconds, which is not going to cancel out. So we are looking for just miles. So we have to cancel seconds and hours. Well, we have uh, 60 seconds is one minute. And then 60 minutes is one hour. And we cancel minutes with minutes, seconds with seconds, and now the hours cancel. We have to take this number and divide it by, this is actually dividing by 3,600. So we'll take our answer. We'll divide by 3,600. So in eight seconds, we've gone 0 .068 miles. So the answer is 0 .068 miles. When you do these problems, you really have to pay attention to the labels. Sometimes the labels cancel out really nice, like the seconds. But then when your velocity is in miles per hour, and you're doing that for seconds, and you're finding area into the curve, in other words, integral, these labels don't cancel out as nice as we would like them to. So we have to get them to cancel out. From 1970 to 1980, the rate of potato consumption in a particular country was C of T. Now remember, this is a rate. So what they've given you is pretty much the velocity. Equals 2.2 plus 1.1 to the T, millions of bushels per year, with T being years since the beginning of 1970. How many bushels were consumed from the beginning of 1972 to the end of 1973, in other words, year two to year four. So if they're giving us the rate and we want to find how many, we have to back up to the position function. And we have to find out the displacement. Now they're not saying uh, the, the inventory was this and how much was left in the inventory. They're just saying how much was used. So we really do want displacement here. We're going to do the integral from two to four of, you can just do C of T dt. And that's equal to, let's use our calculator for this. We do math number 9. We have 2.2 plus 1.1 to the x, or to the t, of course, and then comma x, comma 2 to 4. So here is the consumption. The displacement is 7.066, so 7.00 actually 0 0.066 million uh, million bushels.